Glory to God. All right, get your Bible, because I'm I feel like teaching this morning. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to teach and preach. Because I need y'all to hear this word. The devil don't want me to, he doesn't want me to bless y'all with this word like God bless you. But it's on. Do y'all hear me? Get your Bible and let's go to the book of Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew. Take the base out of this microphone. The Gospel according to Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse number one, Matthew 24, beginning at verse number one. Are we there? Amen. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads like this, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. And shall deceive me. Is that in your Bible? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And ye shall hear of wars. And rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. Mm -hmm. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Mm. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive men. <clears throat> verse 12, our last verse. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I want to take a few minutes and I want to talk to you all this morning about warning comes before destruction. Warning comes before destruction. Destruction. Would y'all say that with me? Warning, Warning. comes Warning. Before, before destruction. destruction. Come on, let's say it one more time. Warning comes, Warning comes before, before destruction. 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 Let us pray, Father. We thank you for this glorious moment. Time to spend in your word to speak to your people. God, make it crystal clear what you're saying to us. Help me to speak your word with clarity and with accuracy. Let the hearers hear. Let the doers do. Oh God, it is in the matchless name of Jesus that we do ask these things. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. When I was coming up, I used to hear that saying, you know, warning comes before destruction. Has anybody ever heard that? Yes, yes. Me. And, and you know what? Found out to be true. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mama and them give you a fair warning. And they told you not to do it. And you messed around and you did. And something terrible yeah. happens. Yes. Amen. Amen. So just as sure as it happens in the natural, it's happening 
in the spirit man. God would help us to know this morning that warnings come before destruction. Y'all, destruction is on its way. We can try to sugarcoat it. We can try to go around it. We can try to go over it. But we can't. Because it's coming. And what I love, one of the things that I love about God, at least he gives us a warning. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. You, 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 you know, you will probably think it's unfair to not get a warning before the destruction comes. But God is so loving and He is so kind and He is so precise in dealing with humans. He says, I gotta give them a warning. I gotta tell them. Just like it was. Amen. When they built the ark. Mm -hmm. He kept warning. And when the rain came, huh, it was too late. And that's what's going to happen with a whole lot of us. You see, we all, at some point, sometime in our life, got to turn into an evangelist. What do you mean? You got to win some souls to the kingdom of our God. If you don't tell him nothing else, tell him he's on his way. Don't be caught in your sin. Amen? Amen. Why? Because warning comes before destruction. Now this phrase, warning comes before destruction, carries a profound wisdom. And it serves as a cautionary reminder across cultures and generations. I'm quite sure if you can speak Chinese, they'll say the same thing in Chinese. If you can speak African, they will say the same thing. One eat that before that person. Amen. If you speak Ebonics, it doesn't matter what language, because this is a universal language. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets a warning. All right. He will tell you, okay, certain things you don't need to eat. I'm warning you. If you keep on eating them chocolate chip cookies. Mm. Okay. If you keep on eating them M&M's, <laughs> then you got to go see that little man with that white thing on, and he going to tell you, yo, I told you to stop eating that. Now we have a serious problem. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, now you get a, oh, Jesus. But warning comes before the strike. You know, could you imagine how many people have died pre prematurely because they didn't heed to a warning? Thou should not have no other man's wife and folk get caught in the bed with somebody else's spouse. I warned you, I told you, thou shalt not do it. Now I know many people get no way with it. It's okay. They get, or they get by with it, they're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Y'all better, <laughs> better wake up, I'm going to let it get cold and cold in here. Hallelujah. But listen, there is a biblical origin for this, for this topic this morning. If you read your Bible, you will find it has its roots in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 16 and 18. He says, pride goes before destruction, a haughty, haughty spirit before a fall. You got to guard yourself against pride. And, and, and most people in the world right now is walking in pride. Why? Because they got a lot of money, a lot of prestige. They got a lot of say. They got a lot of sway. They got a lot of this and a lot of that. But I want you to remember that pride is an abomination to the Lord. Yes. It is also the root of many, many types of sin. And so 
It's hard to warn a rich man. Because he's sitting on top of the world. Mm -hmm. Who going to tell him something? He acts like God ain't over him. He acts as if God does not see nor hear what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And it takes a preacher, a real preacher, to warn the rich, the poor, and whoever else. That warning comes. Before destruction. Because the truth of the matter is your money is not going to help you when destruction comes. Mm -hmm. your, your, your position is not going to help you when God unleashes all of his destruction against this devil and against his enemies. Nothing going to be able to help you. I don't care who, what, whatever you may say. God ain't trying to hear you. So I'm telling somebody. You, you may not be rich. You may not be poor. You may be middle class. Wherever you at, warning comes before destruction. Mm -hmm. mm, Lord have mercy. Behaving the pride elevates himself. Elevates himself above others. And watch this. They even think they are above God. Mm -hmm. It is the exact opposite of the fear of the Lord. And his two greatest commandments, to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength, and to love others as yourself. It's amazing how we get a little change in our pocket. Feel like we're on top of the world. <laughs> okay. Y'all ain't had no change in y'all pocket? <laughs> Now, I'm not talking about fixing. I'm talking about some money. You, you know, you don't got your couple hundred thousand. Can nobody tell you nothing. Girl, can you give me a No, girl. You got time for that? Last week you had time. You got, a little, got, your, little, got your little cho cho over now. You, you know, you want to act all sedated and act all real pretty and everybody else looking bad. Pride. That's all it is. But I'm saying this to tell you that, that there is a destruction in being prideful. I'm going to explain it a little bit later and show you how God sees the world. And he wants us to see it the same way. Because like these disciples, oh Lord, I'm going to. Mm -hmm. I'm going. Like these disciples. They tell Jesus, wow, look at this church, look at this temple, look, look at this, it's, it's, like, it's marvelous. It's, Y'all seen big mega churches? How nice they look and how beautiful they are. You ever seen that? You ever wonder, ooh, oh, yellow. It didn't move Jesus. <laughs> it didn't move him at all. He was like, yeah. Tell y'all something. One day, this place is going to be rubbish. It's going to be bricks on top of bricks. Just destroyed. Why are you telling us that? Because they were more focused on the outside beauty than what was really going on on the inside. And what they didn't know was that the priests on the inside of the temple were filled. The priests on the inside were corrupt. The priests on the inside were doing what they were supposed to be doing. You say, what does God do with us? Because when, when we take a good look at ourselves, we think we're pretty. We think we look good. Y'all know you're all made up and you got your weave on, you got your tie, you got your, you know, your kicks and all this. It look good in the mirror. But on the inside, you tore up from the floor. You are a hot mess. I know if I could pull back, if I could pull back the skin, what will we see? A bunch of corrosion, a bunch of mess, a bunch of this, a 
And, and I'm telling you, in time, it is going to deteriorate. So you better stop watching or looking at everything from the outside. We've got to learn how to look from the inside out. Amen? And so, and so the reason why we're so dark on the inside is because we will not follow the master. We will not give our hearts to Jesus. Oh yeah, we look good, we smell good, we go to church just about every Sunday. Just about. But on the inside, Wayne, we are messed up. And, and here's what gets me. We can lift our hands. We can sing a little bit, play a little bit. We, you know, we can do all that. Look like church folk, but we ain't got nothing, nothing, nothing on the inside. That's why it's easy to walk, on the, walk out the church to your car and cut somebody out before you get home. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. I ain't gonna mess with y'all this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Warnings come before destruction. And, and we've got to clean up this mess that's in the church. Amen. Folk. Folk full of hell in the church. Mm -hmm. That's why God says judgment must begin at the house of God. Because it would be unjust of God to go out and judge all the sinners mm -hmm. for what they're doing. And you got people in your house supposed to be your people doing the same thing we're doing. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, on Friday night, Saturday night, while you're out doing the boogaloo and everything, you don't know who around you. They may show up at church on, you know, Sunday morning and you up. And you cry. Praise the and all of you. And then all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> Come out here! You weren't tipping when you was at the club. Come on, yeah, you were tipping all right. You were tipping that little shot. Tip it on up. What they say? Turn it up or whatever they say. <laughs> Amen. But but we don't want to deal with sin no more. And sin is the thing that separates us from God. Yes. Amen? Amen? We, saints, let me tell y'all something, and this is in the book. You can't do what you want to do in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't. I don't care what you say. You didn't got to hear me, but I know one thing. When you leave here, you heard it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can't say you didn't know. Now it's up to you. We got to learn how to be holy. And if we don't learn, there is some destruction coming our way. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so, and so there is a universal relevance to this, to this topic, topic. Because the concept resonates across various cultures and belief systems. Watch this. In Hinduism, the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita emphasizes healing warnings to avoid self-destruction. The Hindus, the Buddhist says, out of their four noble, noble, no, I'm sorry, four noble truths, highlight the consequences of ignoring warnings. The Greek philosopher Aristotle warned that failing to learn from history leads to repeating mistakes. Watch this. The Chinese philosopher Lo Tuz calls caution against arrogance in the to teaching. <clears throat> That's a lot of words to say. The point is, in America, in Russia, India, Israel, Iran, Iraq, and everywhere. Warning comes before destruction. You see, a preacher, where you going? It's on. You just hang on. We're going. Whether in personal growth, relationships, businesses, or decision making, this adage offers invaluable insight. And 
as my wife was talking about praying for our kids. I don't care how many times you want. They still go out there and hit their head. Well. And guess what? They don't run to their friends. They don't run to, 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 to loved ones and everybody. They run straight to mom and dad. Yeah. The same one that told you not to do it. Uh. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you don't have no cheering. But I promise you, when you do have some, and I tell you to keep your hand off of that stove, <laughs> my mom ain't murdered. Uh-huh. I want you to keep your hand off of that stove. Listen, God is warning us this morning. Come out of sin. Because sin stinks in his nostrils. And if you die, he's not going to give you another chance. You're getting all the chances that you'll ever get while your blood is still running warm in your veins. And while you still can think, while you still have all of your faculties, God every day is having mercy on you. And then when it's over, it's over. Ain't no need of you trying to plead. But I'm sorry. Um, I'm not trying to be funny, but listen, listen, listen to the sounds of those who have another chance, who don't have another chance. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I'm just, I just need one more chance. I know I should have, I should have listened, but can you give me just? One more chance. I know, I know. I'm gonna try, but God, 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 oh God. I'm serious. It's over. It's over. Warning comes before destruction. I don't know who who I'm talking to this morning. But the Lord sent me to tell you this morning, again, warning comes before destruction. For those of you that want to play church, say, I'm just not ready. Mm. Let me ask you, are you ready for a devil's hell? Mm. Are you ready to be eternally separated from your creator? Mm. You ain't ready. Why not? You tell me what is so important than your own soul. You tell me. Please help me to understand. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, that's what it is. I'm a dead dad. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe that God can honor dead dad? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that God can deliver Oh, Jesus. Mm, I'm telling you, warning comes before destruction. For a minute, because I feel the twist in this message right now. Let me ask you right now. What is it that's really keeping you from God? Do you think that you will be able to stand before him and try to explain to him what it is that was more important than him? Mm. Y'all, I'm trying to tell you. And I'm telling you, the young are dying. Mm. As a matter of fact, it seems like they are dying much faster yes, than the others. Yes, it does. There is no hope after death has come. You can't talk to nobody. <laughs> you can't ask no more questions. You can't understand. Your fate is sealed. I don't know who I'm talking to in here this morning. Y'all, I'm telling you, this is a different anointing. You, whoever you are, you got to stop playing with God. 
God has given you plenty of time. Mm. Plenty of opportunities. Do you not know how many people didn't get another chance? Mm. Here you are on Sunday morning. And God says, come on. In other words, he's... Sorry for you yeah. on the day of judgment.